In today's video, we're going to talk about using Streamlabs OBS for Facebook Live in 2021. So stay tuned. Hey, I'm Walt from Livestream and Tech, and there's a lot of stuff to cover. So we're going to go ahead and jump right into this. So we're going to jump into Streamlabs OBS. You can follow me. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to log into Streamlabs OBS under your Facebook login. All right join me over here. Okay, I'm logged in under uh, my Facebook account here under Streamlabs. If you're not logged in and you're still trying to figure out how to get logged in, you're going to go ahead and down here under settings, there should be a login uh, right down here on the bottom left hand corner. You can log out, say you're logged in uh, to Twitch or YouTube, you can actually log into Facebook. However, if you do have the premium account through Streamlabs OBS, uh, this will not make a difference as then you should have uh, the availability to stream to all three sites at the same time. Uh, this pretty much takes the place of, say, uh, a, a multi-streaming service such as uh, Restream.io. Uh, uh, however, I feel that <laughs> Restream.io is far superior to this, but uh, this will do uh, uh, for a beginner um, great uh, because it takes you to the three main platforms, which is Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube. Obviously, there's no longer a mixer, so that's out of the question. But as you see here, it's uh, prompting me to uh, select the Prime, which is their premium version that you uh, pay a monthly fee for. And you get all sorts of other bells and whistles, which we'll talk about in another video. But uh, for right now, we're going to focus on getting you to be able to go live on Facebook. So the first thing we're going to want to cover is we're going to want to look at the output uh, you're going to want to make sure you switch the output mode from simple to advanced in the encoder. Okay. I have it set at NVEC. So basically what that means is I am using my graphics card to do the encoding versus my CPU. However, if say I was streaming a graphically intensive game or maybe possibly a game that was in development, uh, that, uh, is not, uh, uh, fully, uh, what, how do I want to say this, uh, basically is not taking full use of the graphics card and it's going to take up a lot more resources on the graphics card to render the graphics, uh, you might want to switch it over. And that's uh, pretty quick and easy. You're just going to sw switch it over to software X264 that will switch it to your CPU. Now, this is something that you might also want to take into consideration uh, for those of you who are using, say, low-end PCs. Um, where you don't have either a dedicated graphics card or the graphics card just does not have that much punch. Um, you're going to probably want to stick to X264. Uh, uh, but if, uh, say, you have uh, a, a decent uh, graphics card, say like an NVIDIA uh, 1070 or up, uh, then I would definitely recommend uh, switching it to the NVEC. Uh, the next one, you're going to want to leave this alone. This should already be pretty much pre-dialed in for you when you set up Streamlabs OBS, and that is the rate control. You want it to say CBR, that's constant bit rate. Uh, we don't want to mess around with that at all. We want it to be at a constant bit rate. And next thing, bit rate. We are allowed up to 4,000, 4,000 kbps or 4 megabits per second. Uh, when it comes to Facebook, at least that's what they recommend. Now, I've played around with this in the past, and so have uh, other viewers, and uh, they've noticed that they've been able to squeak out, say, 6,000. Um, I've played around with it. Uh, sometimes I've pushed it to 6,000, and the streams look great, and other times it hasn't looked so great. So the thing is, is you're really going to want to play around with it. I would definitely recommend starting at the 4,000, saying that your internet speed can handle it. And you can find that out just by doing an internet speed test. And you want to make sure that your upload is going to be able to handle that. Now, say, for instance, your upload is, uh, say, at 4,000 kilobits per second. Uh, you're going to want to drop that down probably possibly to 3,000 because you're going to want to leave a little overhead. You're going to want to leave a little wiggle room, especially if you're playing like an online type game. The keyframe intervals, we're going to leave that at set to auto. So zero stands for auto. The preset quality, you could switch it over to performance, max performance, low latency. I have played with the low latency. I find it to be horrendous on Facebook. Now, here's the thing. Uh, this isn't going to be necessarily a one-size-fits-all. This is basically a starting point to get you started. And the idea is, is each stream maybe possibly change one thing. And then go back and rewatch the stream or ask your viewers how it looks. 
but really you're going to be the true judge of it uh, because the fact that you might be ha you might have a different CPU, you might have a different graphics card, more RAM, uh, better internet connection, so on and so forth, or the distance between you and the Facebook server that you are uh, serving your live stream to might differ than where I'm located here in the United States. So these are ones that you're going to want to put around. I start out at quality and then I've played around before. I've done performance, so on and so forth. And it seems to kind of be, once again, it's randomized uh, as far as what. But then again, I play all sorts of different games or I do different types of content when live streaming on Facebook. So that is also going to change it as well. Profile, we're going to leave that on at high. Once again, that is something that you can possibly play around with. I wouldn't recommend it. If you're going to play with anything, I would play with the uh, pre uh, preset quality performance, so on and so forth, and leave the profile alone. Uh, GPU, go ahead and leave that set to zero and max B frames set to two. Okay, now we should be ready to rock and roll on that. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to click on audio. Now audio, uh, once again, uh, I would say just leave this one alone. 44.1 uh, kilohertz is going to be ample for you. And obviously leave the channels set to stereo. You go do a mono. Um, it's Once again, it's going to give you that monotone sound versus the stereo sound. The thing is, is you might have a really horrible microphone. And if that's the case, you do sometimes uh, may want to switch it to, say, a mono um, and that might take out some of that tin canny sound um, that some of the cheaper microphones have. Next one, this is really important one and everyone always asks me this question. Okay, no, you are stuck at 720p when starting out streaming on Facebook Live. However, once you level up, then you are allowed to go up to the 1080. So as you notice, my base canvas resolution is set to 1080. That is what I see on my monitor. That is what I'm playing at or doing whatever on. That is my workspace. And then the output scaled resolution is what the viewer is going to see. This is what we are actually sending to the Facebook servers to uh, show our live stream. So I'm actually downscaling. And believe it or not, I've found that even, even on Twitch, I've done this before, where I will take, say, 1080 and downscale it to 720. And it actually tightens it up. It actually crisps it up because you're taking all those uh, pixels and you're, you're jamming them uh, or compressing them even more. Now... Once again, this is going to be determined on the content you're providing. Obviously, if it's just a talking head video where you're doing interviews or you're uh, doing response or uh, reactionary type videos or whatnot, that isn't really going to be too big of a game changer. But when it comes to gaming and whatnot, uh, you definitely you want to try to level up as quick as you can so you can take advantage of that 1080 um versus the 720 here's the thing though we all know and if you've watched uh facebook live streams you'll see some facebook live streams where they look fantastic they look great and then you'll see i would say about 75 percent of the other ones look like hot potatoes they look like garbage and once again i just say that i chalk that up to as facebook is still going through the learning curves uh, they are not Twitch. They are not YouTube. Uh, they are way behind the uh, ball when it comes to live streaming. So it's something that we're going to have to deal with. I figured by now, um, you know, a couple of years have passed that the growing pains would have uh, uh, ironed themselves out by now. But uh, we are still feeling some of the pains over on Facebook Live. Uh, hotkeys. Hotkeys are self-explanatory. Uh, here's the thing. I would just highly recommend getting a uh, stream deck. Yep, get the um, Elgato Stream Deck. It is a great tool to use. Then you won't even have to worry about uh, assigning hotkeys for you as well. Uh, advance. Okay, once again, this is one of those ones where you kind of, you, you want to kind of leave it alone. Here's the one thing I do want you to look at though. I do have the Force GPU as rendering device enabled. Once again, that's because we are using the NVEC encoder. And... Um, by having this checked or whatever, it's the GPU, it's the graphics card we are rendering with the graphics card and not something else such as the CPU. And then as far as all these other ones, notifications, so on and so forth, remote control, remote controls, uh, we'll cover that one in a different video. Once again, remember this is not a one size fits all for the 2021 Facebook Live settings, but just remember if you are starting out, definitely you want to make sure that your output is uh, you have the encoder selected properly 
uh, play around with it. If you, uh, if you have any questions or concerns on that one, I would always suggest starting out with your CPU at the uh, X264, starting out with that first. Um, even at, uh, say you are playing like, uh, some simple games, very low fi type games, um, definitely run the, uh, X264 and, uh, just see how far you can push that CPU and then say your next stream, go in, run that same game, play the same game and then run it at the NVEC using your graphics card. Once again, though, this is for your, uh, not on board motherboard graphics cards uh, that you, some of the laptops come with and some of the cheaper uh, PCs come with. This is for dedicated NVIDIA graphics cards only. And once again, I would recommend anything like a 1070 or newer uh, if you're going to run the NVEC or NVIC, however you want to say it. And then the bit rate, that's also the important one. 4,000, you're going to want to make sure that you have that selected as well. Uh, anything above that, good luck to you. Actually, leave it in the comments below uh, whether you find that you were able to push well above 4,000. Like I said, I've played around all the way up to the 6,000 range, and I've had luck, and then I've had bad luck too at times. And it could be totally something different. It could be just on Facebook's end. I don't know, but I find that I have a little bit more stability when it comes to the 4,000. And here's the other question that comes out a lot, and I want to go ahead and answer that real quick. A lot of people say, okay, well, when I level up, it shows that I can go up to 1080p, but it doesn't show that I have an extension on the bit rate. Here, this is something that I've heard from other people that have leveled up. They say that they notice that that cap seems to be have risen for them, that they are able to push 6,000, 7,000, 8,000 kilobits per second um, during their live streams and have had no issues. So I think it's just us people that haven't leveled up. We are stuck at the 4,000 kilobits per second. So uh, just play around with the settings. Once again, it is not a one size fits all. Uh, let's go ahead and jump over here real quick. Okay, 2021 hasn't brought much changes. The uh, actual onboard dashboard as far as getting your stream key and whatnot on Facebook, it's kind of changed a little bit. The, the, uh, 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 the graphic user interface has uh, changed up a little bit. Actually, I kind of like it. Um, so we'll cover that in another video or whatnot. But as far as Streamlabs OBS uh, for Facebook live streaming, uh, in 2021 it's pretty much cut and dry once again not one size fits all so some of you might have some bangers of some cpu uh cpus and graphics cards where you're able to push that envelope uh while some of us other people uh we might not have some uh, you know the most powerful uh pcs to run with and some of us even probably worse off where we're running off of laptops and whatnot which is just fine but just know your limitations and change only one thing at a time per stream so that way if you mess something up you know exactly what to change back or where you went wrong you start changing five things you don't know what thing actually improved it and you didn't know which one thing made it worse it could have been all five things and it could only have been one thing so change only one thing at a time uh, and what you want to definitely do one thing at a time is watch this video right here where we talk about a little bit more facebook live or you can check out this video right here where youtube recommends you watch it okay. until then see you around